So heading into round eight, we do have a change of league leaders with the Cronulla Sharks sitting on the top on 12 points, followed by the Storm on 12, with the Finns and the Panthers closing out the top four on 10 points. As for the rest of the eight, you got Manly on nine, Brisbane on eight, as well as the Raiders and North Queensland also on eight points. As for how we went with our picks, look, the week started off bloody terribly. Two red carpets, thanks a lot to the bloody Sydney Roosters and the New Zealand Warriors. Thanks for nothing, as well as Parramatta. Agatho did salute there in that match, and that Chook Storm game could have went either way. Are uh, the Warriors, though? Did it tough on the road against a pretty impressive St. George side. But yeah, the rest of the matches, uh, we couldn't nail a margin, but we did get the results, which is what we're here for. And the cherries on top, we bagged a few meat pies with our boy. Tommy Hazelton saluting yet again. Love to see that out of the big guy. I think we got him for right around the same price as last time too, which is pretty good. Sunday in particular was pretty good. The Bulldogs got up, Bronson Zeri got over, but yeah, the bounce back was pretty solid. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> There's, when you start the week 0-3, bruh, it is the worst feeling. So that's how we did in round seven. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the Anzac round has in store for us. All right, so we have a Thursday triple header to kick off this Anzac round. Starting at 2 p.m. at Go Media Stadium, we have the New Zealand Warriors hosting the Gold Coast Titans. Now, looking at ins and outs, starting with the home side, Kirk Capewell will be unavailable, and taking his place will be young gun Jacob Laban. Joining the bench, they have vet Dylan Walker in the 14. They also have another youngster coming off the bench, uh, set to make his debut. He goes by the name of Zion Mayu'u. As for the visitors... They have the same 17, uh, so there isn't much to look at in regards to changes for uh, the Titans. As for my pick, after a pretty disappointing loss on the road last week, we're looking for a big bounce back from the Warriors at home. And for our try scorer, we're going to go back to what we know. He had a bit of a shocker last week, Jack Ford. He's a bit of a workhorse, can run some mean lines, but uh, he has that odd error in him every now and then. He is hoping he has a little bounce back of his own. We got him. I was initially thinking 13 plus, but the Titans, man, they're still looking for their first dub of the season. So we're going to go with them to keep it close. We'll go the Warriors 1 to 12. The second game of the round, we have a banger, my personal match of the round. The Dragons host the Roosters at Allianz. Weird, but I get it. Looking at changes and starting with the Dragons, there's no changes to the side that upset the Warriors last week, although Jack Bird is in reserves, so he could come back to play in the centers, pushing Lomax back out to the wing, and uh, Dui Polotu being the odd one out. As for the Roosters, now... They welcome back a couple of guns, Dom Young back from suspension and Sam Walker coming off their concussion cooldown, both back joining their respective positions in the starting side. So Swali moves back to the centers and Michael Jennings will drop back to 18th man. Also Connor Watson falls back into his natural position which is 14 coming off the pine, moving Zach Docker Clay and back into reserves. As for my pick, in this Anzac Day classic. I'm going to slightly lean towards the side of the dragons here. You know, the roosters are back with all the cooks in the kitchen. Will they be smooth? Will they find their flow? Have they even found their flow with all their playmakers playing? That's the real question. I'm not too confident in either pick, to be honest. You know how these games go. But yeah, like I said, we're going to slightly lean towards the momentum of the dragons. Of course, 1 to 12 points. And in a game showcasing a lot of aerial specialists, we'll jump on the man with the hot hand at the moment. Zach Lomax to bag a meat pie. And to close out the Thursday triple header, we have the Storm hosting the Bunnies. This being played at Amy Park, of course. Ins and outs, there's a lot happening on the side of the Rabbitohs, but we'll start off with the home side here. No changes. <laughs> Moving on. For the Bunnies, Damien Cook is back after sitting at, what, what was he at? 18th man last time they played, two weeks ago. So we starting at Hooker, of course, with Peter Mamazelis shifting to the 14. They will also be without Devita Totola and Tai Tai Munro, so jumping onto the wing, Jacob Gagai gets another crack, and Shaquai Mitchell moves to the starting front row. They also welcome back a veteran and Jai Arrow to the uh, to the interchange. As for my pick, look, let's keep it short and sweet here. I'm back in the Melbourne Storm, and I'm back in the Big Four. I'm going to back them in against any team that isn't the Penrith Panthers or Broncos, to be honest. So yeah, give me the Storm, and for our try scorer. I'm liking both edges to be honest, Sean Bloor or Gato. Well, lock in Gato, he got it done for us a couple weeks ago, so we'll take him again. Actually, never mind, let's go a bit rogue here. Uh, speaking of rogue, let me get Cam Munster. He's coming up against Dean Hawkins and Keon. I'm not sure, I don't think he's scored this season yet, so uh, we'll jump on him to score his first try. 
Moving on to Friday, only the one game at 8pm, a decent match between the Seagulls and the Eels, this being played at 4 points park, love that. For the ins and outs, starting with the Manly, uh, they welcome back Josh Aloy A from suspension, Matt Lodge moves to the bench, Aaron Woods drops out of the side, uh, they also welcome back Nathan Brown, that's a huge in coming off the pine. For Parramatta, Ethan Sanders, he'll be making his debut in the halves. For Deja and Asi, while they also welcome back, one of their cult heroes, Micah Sivo, back on the wing. And they have a trio of new faces on the bench, Kamatu Ilangi, uh, Makaesi Makatoa, and Brendan Hans in the 14. As for my pick, I do love Manly at Four Points Park, so we'll take that. And I think it'll be another close one. They did play back in March. The Eels did win that, 28-24. An interesting spot for Parramatta. The spotlight's been on them all week. Uh, not necessarily them, but their coach. He's come under fire. I think they respond. Do I think they get the win, though? No. Uh, so we'll take Manly, 1-12 to 12 points. And I'll take Chez. Lurking off a break, as he typically does. Let's move on. Super Saturday, we have two matches. Uh, the first being the Tigers hosting the Broncos, this being played at Campbelltown Sports Ground. And there is a plethora of changes to both sides. So let's get to it, starting with the Tigers. So if you watched the matches last week, you'll know that Junior Dubow did go down injured. That opens the door for former Waikato Chief, I believe? Rugby Union convert Solomon Alaimalo. It'll be his first game of Rugby League, first game of NRL Rugby League at least. There's also a bit of movement in the forward pack, with Fonua Bole dropping to the bench, John Bateman moving to the middle, playing in the 13, and Samuela Fainu. He'll be playing in the back row, starting in the back row. For my Brizzy Bronx, uh, plenty of good news here. They welcome back Payne Haas, they skip Adam Reynolds, and a couple of youngsters in Dean Mariner and Brendan Piakura. They all come back, not quite full strength as they'll be without Ezra Mam and Salman Cobo. So Jesse Arthurs moves from the wing to the centers. Dean Mariner on the wing, of course, and Jock Madden will fill in for Ezra Mam. Damn, I was hoping they'd give uh I was hoping they'd give Tristan Saylor a run. But they seem pretty adamant with uh, Jock Madden. As for my pick, Broncos near full strength on the road. Pretty confident they could get the win here. Shock surprise, another fave. I mean, this round overall is feeling like a box of faves type of round. Although, I did pick the Dragons, who I believe are the underdogs. So, no, not a box of favorites. Picks aside, I am pretty excited for this match. I like the way the Tigers have been playing this year. And uh, some heads to heads I'm looking forward to. Uh, in the forward pack in particular, young Stefano Utuikamano, who's had a career best start, I'd say. Coming up against a seasoned Devet in Paint House, of course. Another youngster versus veteran uh, in the halves, Lockie Galvin, taking on Adam Reynolds. I'm excited to see how Alai Malo does. A pretty big unit, 6 foot 5, and he comes in at 100 kgs. So, in terms of a modern day NRL winger, that's like the ideal build, right? Brian Toa would say otherwise, but that guy is one of one. Anyway, that's enough waffling about my pick. Like I said, I'm on the Broncos. I'm on them 13 plus. I do think the Tigers will hang for the majority, but uh, there's plenty of points in this Bronx side. I think they run away with it to late. So, yeah, Broncos 13 plus, and for our try scorer. I want to go with, uh, I want to go safe, go with Dean Mariner. And the primetime game for Saturday, we have the Cowboys hosting the Panthers at Country Bank Stadium. When it comes to changes for the Cowboys, there's just a bit of movement on the Ford Pack and bench, so... Kiwi International, Griffin Neem gets the start over Jason Dalmololo, who will be in the 15. And Thomas Mikaele gets a go on the bench, he'll be in the 7 team. He had a pretty good, um, a pretty good preseason, so I'm keen to see how he does. On the side of the Panthers, they have a massive in in Nathan Cleary, so Brad Schneider bows out of the side. And Taylor May, he's back in the centers for Paul Alamotti after being sent to the naughty corner last week. As for my pick in this, I am back in the back-to-back-to-back prims. And I'm debating if we should choose another middle to go over. Like we said last week, the cows look extra soft through the middle. That's why we took our big boy, Tom Hazelton. The stars are lined for that one. Well, the Panthers, I think we'll play it safe. They do love a long shift, so we'll go with Brian Tuttle. And on to our Sunday Arvo matches, the first being the Dolphins hosting the Knights at Suncorp Stadium. Looking at the ins and outs, one change for the Dolphins. Kurt Donahue makes his return back from suspension, uh, pushing Sean O'Sullivan out of the 17. And for the Newcastle Knights, David Armstrong makes his debut, replacing the injured Kalen Ponga, who's out uh, for several months, I believe. They also welcome back veteran Dan Gago, who will be captaining, and Jed Cartwright on the bench for Jack Hetherington, who has been suspended. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah, look, I get no dope from this Kalen Pongalis Newcastle Knights side, so I'll be on the fins at Suncorp, coming off a dominant win over the Parramatta Eels. 
we'll back them in in a close one one to 12 points you know because the knights were pretty awful last week they'll be looking to bounce back our try scorer we're gonna go with uh you and aiken and to close out Anzac round, we will head over to Canberra yet again for another Sunday Avo match at GIO Stadium. They'll be hosting the Sharkies and looking at both sides. Obviously the bigger mission, Jamal Fogarty going down with a bicep injury. So filling in for him in the seven will be their recruits, Manly Imports, KO Weeks. They'll be without Braden Trindle who has been stood down for some off-field stuff with Trindle out. So that means Daniel Atkinson joins Nico Hines and the halves. They also get Sione Kato back from suspension and he'll be a straight swap for uh, the rookie Sam Stone Street. As for my pick, uh, looking at this Canberra side bro, it's looking rough. That's going to be the worst spine in the league. Um, interested to see how KO Weeks does in the 7. I don't even know if he has a kicking game or maybe uh, maybe Ethan Strange will take the reins. Uh, but yeah, I'll be on the Sharks. I do think the Raiders will put up a fight. They still have a pretty damn good forward pack. That's Sharkies 1-12 to and to score a try, we're going to go with a 20-23 style pick and take Brighton Nikora and that's about it lock it in our picks for round eight done and dusted as always if you have any picks of your own let us know in the comment section down below and if you enjoyed that be sure to run and the like button and for more rugby league related content or more content in general go ahead and drop your boy a cheeky sub thanks for tuning in and I'll see you, 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 you. later